Hello my dear viewers, this is a, an extremely new channel, we are very inexperienced, we don't have many viewers. If you enjoy the content or recommend some content to create, a topic of your choice perhaps, we would be most delighted. But for now, let's look at a little story about whether static stretching improves running performance, that is, endurance running performance which we can define as anything over 1,500 meters in race distance. So, pack your bags, I'll move the mic closer, and relax as we dive into the scientific literature. Definition, stretch, of something soft or elastic, be made or be capable of being made longer or wider, without tearing or breaking. The definition of stretch can be applied to that of our muscle tendon units. That is, our muscles attached to bone via their tendinous attachment points. If we stretch a muscle, and we can do this voluntarily, right now is stretch the lower body. Feel is that you're going to feel this nice stretch up the back into the calf area. Hip forward this way too. We're going to do a little bit of a plie here. We're going to just take a little lunge to one side. And the change in muscle length can be seen for if you were to stretch to your maximal range of motion for a particular muscle. Let's say you sit down and touch your toes. After a brief period of stretching, you can now reach further, and this is one of the acute adaptations you see when doing stretching. But there are several forms of stretching that I must make you aware of before we dive into the evidence. The one we just described is static stretching. That is, holding your body in a specific position that induces a stretch on the muscle tendon unit to which you hold for approximately 15 seconds to one minute. Hey Jennifer, how are you? So we were kind of thinking well maybe we can do something to stretch her out a little. There is also dynamic stretching. Hi, I'm Bob Shrupp, physical therapist. And now this would be a dynamic hamstring stretch. Okay, well, no, watch me. Oh. I'm serious. Well, yeah, that yeah. would be one where the person actively moves their muscle through a range of motion. There is ballistic stretching, which is a more uncontrolled version of dynamic stretching, in which you use the momentum of your body to induce a quick and rapid jerk stretch. This reminds me of the days back in the 1980s, where the formal attire was spandex. There's also proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Now, as detailed as the name seems, it's a more intimate form of stretching. At that point, when we say relax into our new range of motion. But we won't be discussing that any further in this video. In this video, we were discussing static stretching, and later on, we will be discussing dynamic stretching. And you'll find out why in just a bit. Firstly, the use of static stretching can be seen by its acute adaptation to increase range of motion that can be advantageous to the athlete and their performance. For example, kicking in martial arts. To kick head height in martial arts, you need lots of hip range of motion. Similar to long toe or heel hooks in rock climbing, which other climbers might not be able to do simply because they have a limited hip range of motion. But endurance running, well, it is evident from the kinematics, or the body position of runners, that a large range of motion is not required to perform well in these events. So why is it that static stretching is performed very often in the warm-ups prior to running? Some may say it reduces injury or reduces muscle soreness. However, the evidence has consistently shown that this is not the case. A 2015 review of the scientific literature identified that it has been consistently demonstrated that stretching has no impact on muscle soreness, nor does it have any impact on chronic injuries that runners are susceptible to. 
They state that runners are largely at risk of overuse injuries such as IT band syndrome, stress fractures, and plantar fasciitis, to which stretching cannot reduce the prevalence of. So why do people actually perform static stretching prior to training or competition? The question we are interested in is whether static stretching increases running performance. Let's go back to 1989, when this topic of research began to emerge in the scientific literature. A group of researchers were interested whether static stretching improved running economy. Running economy is simply a measure of how much energy you're using when you run at a given pace. A common endurance adaptation is that you become more efficient at running at a given pace compared to before training, and it is therefore desirable to have improved running economy, especially in longer duration events, where being efficient is very important. And therefore it's of no surprise to us that running economy is strongly associated with long distance running performance. And in fact, among athletes that have similar physiological characteristics, those with better running economy seem to be those who run faster. The use of static stretching before running therefore is controversial, as we know that running economy is associated with a stiff muscle tendon unit, and we've actually found that runners that are less flexible have better running economy. Therefore, increasing the flexibility of a muscle before running is quite counterintuitive. So if we look at the 1989 study, they recruited a group of uh, young males, but with limited hip flexion extension range of motion. And this is important, but we'll uh, come back to this. Here are some wonderful pictures of the uh, methods they use. They appear to have strapped their leg in some kind of cast to be able to make sure that each participant did the exact same stretches in the exact same position. Now in order to investigate the effect of static stretching, they need to perform several running speeds after static stretching and perform the same exact test but without static stretching. It's very simple. And what you do is you compare the results when they did statically stretch compared to when they didn't to see if there were any differences. What they found is that at each running velocity which they ran at, which ranges from walking to running at around half marathon pace, they found that each of these velocities running economy improved. Their conclusion, they state that submaximal running economy can be performed more efficiently after a period of static stretching. But if we take a more critical look at their study design, it begs some questions. Firstly, can these data be generalized to people who are not limited in their hip range of motion? And secondly, and perhaps a more important question, why did they order their study design in the following order. Each participant on one day performed the running test, rested for 10 minutes, then did stretching, and then performed the same running test after the stretching. Now, there are some issues with ordering the study design like this, because prior exercise can influence subsequent exercise. We also don't know if it might have acted as a familiarization with the study design, the protocol, the equipment they're using, or just simply using a treadmill, as these can have effects on someone's running economy. But what we can't be sure of is that the effects were solely due to static stretching, which is why this study's conclusion is misleading. And in fact, this issue should have been spotted when drafting the study in the first place. But because this study was done such a long time ago, the authors may have simply not been aware that this is an actual issue. For this kind of research in today's standards, we would have a familiarization trial and we would randomize the order of the tests and perform them on separate days with adequate rest in between to make sure we are controlling for any of these effects. If we go forward a bit to 2004, a review was done on the evidence base regarding the effect of static stretching on performance. They found the only study relating to endurance running was the 1989 study, whilst all the others related to sprint performance. Therefore, for 15 years, this one study showing an improvement in running economy with static stretching lasted, and would likely have spread around the running community like wildfire, and perhaps is the reason why static stretching was so commonly used back 
in the early running days or the early running communities, and still lingers to this day in the older running populations. But then something happened. The human mind remained curious, time passed, and research was done. 2011. A systematic review was published in the European Journal of Applied Physiology. A review of the acute effects of static and dynamic stretching on performance. It turns out that answering our original question is not so much a case of yes or no, it does or doesn't improve or reduce performance. It depends on many factors. They found that depending whether you are male or female, trained, untrained, the amount and intensity of stretching you did, the type of stretching you did, and the type of performance that you did after the stretching all appear to influence the effect of stretching. Welcome to the world of science, where these little intricacies are highly important and make general conclusions rather quite difficult. Although the results of this study are important to us, they only identified five studies relating to running performances. One was the one we've already discussed with the flawed study design and in fact was the only study that they identified to see an improvement in running economy, whilst the other studies either found no effect or detrimental effects. 2007, a study found that static stretching made no difference to moderate intensity running. 2008, a study found that static stretching made no difference at running at moderate intensities. 2010, they found that static stretching reduced endurance performance and increased energy expenditure at moderate intensities. 2011, static stretching in women made no effect on running economy at moderate intensities. Like all science, we do find contradictory findings and uh, we must pay attention to these to avoid cherry picking studies. Time passed once again, 2013. Another systematic review was done regarding the effect of stretching on performance. 43 studies were identified and actually began to reveal a trend in the evidence. Static stretching appeared to either have no effect on performance or reduce it, whilst dynamic stretching appeared to either have no effect or increase performance. And you can pause the video here to view their conclusion they made from the systematic review but we'll keep on moving because this video is getting quite long. Now, the studies weren't specifically aimed at running, and thus generalizing these conclusions to running must be done with caution. 2014, static stretching reduced uphill running performance by 8%. 2015, studies used two long stretching protocols that are not commonly done in practice. Therefore, what are the effects of short static stretching? around 20 seconds per exercise. No difference was found in time trial performance. The same researchers, 2015, dynamic stretching improves running performance at paces equivalent to that of the 3000 and 5000 meter running events. At this point in time, people were now recommending that you should instead use dynamic stretching and not use static stretching. And this was fine for some years. Uh, this stuck and made its way around the running communities and also several other sporting industries or sports where this was relevant too. But then 2019 happened. Some more research was done and they found that dynamic stretching done after a 15 minute warm up that was simply running at 70% of VT max which is equivalent to around marathon pace for recreational runners. Reduced time trial performance by approximately 20%. Now, these findings are, well, how do we put it? They go against what everyone once believed that dynamic stretching was uh, good and should be used for performance, but uh, not many researchers actually used a standard warm-up that is currently used in many running practices, that is, moderate intensity, jogging and running, and then performing the dynamic stretches. 20% reduction in performance, they found. Striking, remarkable. And as this was published only last year, we really haven't been able to expand on it, simply because there hasn't been enough time to do the research. And that's currently where we are at this point in time. 
waiting for research to uh, explain to us why adding 15 minute running to the warm up with dynamic stretching caused such a big reduction in performance. Now there are many questions that can be asked such as the, the period between the stretching and the time trial being only one minute but uh, they did the exact same study without the warm-up and found dynamic stretching improved performance by around 15 percent so the addition of this warm-up appeared to really change the effect of dynamic stretching and because runners typically use jogging or running in their warm-up these results come to some surprise but are of particular importance because we must now be curious or cautious of what our warm-up consists of, especially if we want to include dynamic stretching after it, because the 20% reduction in performance is not trivial, it is definitely a meaningful reduction in performance that many would avoid at all cost. So now it's 2020, approaching October, still waiting for research to elucidate these claims, we're still waiting for more research to be done on the effect of stretching on longer duration performances such as anything over 60 minutes general lack of consistency in our research findings and that the effect of dynamic stretching may be mediated by what else was done in the warm-up so you are hoping to come out with some knowledge please take it as you wish you are hoping to come with answers, definitive answers, as to whether static stretching or dynamic stretching is good or bad. As with any scientific topic, it's a bit more complicated than a yes-no answer, because there are many factors that appear to mediate the effects of stretching on performance. But for now, I'm going to leave this book chapter open for future research to write into, and I hope one day to return to it to speak to you about what new research has uncovered about the effect of stretching on performance. For now it seems sensible to suggest that uh, it's clear research that static stretching either has no effect or reduces performance, dynamic stretching either appears to have no effect or improves performance, but its effect may be mediated by what else you do in the warm-up. These studies need to be replicated to understand if this is a consistent effect and then future studies should investigate whether different types of warm-ups can bring back the benefits of dynamic stretching. So it appears thus far that static stretching is not recommended during the warm-up, whilst dynamic stretching is. However, we are really only beginning to understand the effect of how other aspects of the warm-up, such as moderate intensity running, can impact the benefits of dynamic stretching. So, I'll leave the rest for you. Farewell.